Connecticut and Massachusetts, Z&M Homes buys houses. Sell your property to the local guys. Needs repairs, updates, maybe foreclosure or inherited? No problem. We got gotcha. you. Google or add us on Facebook at Z-A-N-D-M-Homes.com. It's Vaxi's Musical Podcast. Three sisters, it's useless. So, during my last episode in this podcast, I brought up a very important point. Now, I don't know if you found yourself having this conversation with people yet or not, but on occasion, I've been roped into an argument about how come you don't hear any good music being released these days. And my answer is usually the same. It's an answer that is largely unsatisfying. And my answer is, there's lots of great new artists out there who are making great music all the time. You just have to go out and find it. Now, here's why that answer is unsatisfactory. In the old days, the best way to find out what was going on in music was to either go to a record store and ask questions or wait for stuff to show up on the radio or read about it in a magazine. Either way, it required some effort, and that effort required a little bit of cash. But in today's wildly impatient world with its on-demand a la carte menu of choices, if it doesn't show up in a Google search, then it must not be any good, and it better be for free. Well, let me give you something to chew on. Many of us have become ridiculously spoiled, and many of us seem to have forgotten that discovering new music just doesn't show up out of nowhere. It's a process of active discovery. It's like a Where's Waldo, only with a much better outcome. My guest today is an up-and-coming artist named Billy Tibbles. Billy is a young man who only released his debut single last year with a song Onwards and Upwards, followed by the B-side Lucy. The single was an amazingly tuneful effort and a great start for a young man who literally just graduated from high school. The single was so strong that it garnered the attention of Chris Robinson from the Black Crows, who then produced Billy's recently released six-song EP entitled Stay Teenage. The reviews of this EP have been outstanding. Same with his live performances. This is a guy who has soaked in a bunch of influences that he's used to create music that is both surprising and totally engaging. And it's great new music, the kind of stuff that many of you have been searching for for a very long time. This is my interview with Billy Tibbles, today's guest on Baxi's Musical Podcast. Hi there. Hey, Billy. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? Very good. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, uh... I've been reading up on you and been listening to the uh, to the EP, and you know it's amazing. I have not seen one single lukewarm review of this EP. Usually, there's someone that doesn't like it. It's got to be incredibly encouraging and and very exciting. What's what's going on with you right now? Yeah, no, I've been uh, blown away by the response. It's it's been it's been great. Yeah, I'm listening to the EP and I'm thinking, you know what? Not a bad review, and and deservedly so. And and I think you know, stay teenagers is a great way to come out of the gates and, and and Chris Robinson of the Black Crows produced this how did you get involved with him yeah we uh we actually met at a bar in LA uh through through uh, uh this guy called Brent Rademacher uh who's a friend of mine who put out uh the first single that I put out a seven inch single back in December and he introduced us and we ended up just really getting along i think we've got a pretty similar sense of humor and just started chatting and uh yeah one thing led to another i suppose and i ended up sending him some demo recordings and he really liked them and suggested that we get in the studio and cut a record so yeah he's been um pretty selective over the course of his career and who he chooses to produce he's produced you know several records but he doesn't do a whole lot of it was there something about your music that uh, that reached him and and did he explain that to you yeah i guess i mean i think we we both have similar taste in music as well he's a really big record collector as am i and uh just you know have similar interests like tastes in music so i think it's just kind of something clicked there between us when you're uh, when you're working with a guy like that and you know considering the kind of career that that he's had I mean, what are you able to draw from a, a guy like chris robinson you know i mean not just as a producer but 
just as a guy who has experienced so much during his his own career, what what do you what do you learn from a guy like that? Yeah, I mean, he he really uh, inspires me as a as a front man, you know, because um, he's such a great performer. Uh, I just saw him recently. Actually, we went to see him at a uh, Beach Life Festival with the Black Crows, and it's just amazing to see, you know, such a big production like that. It's really, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, no, he's 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 fantastic. And you know, when we were recording, he was a fantastic producer. Gave us a lot of good ideas. So. You're a relatively young guy. I know a lot of people that uh, you know talk to you about your youth. I'll I'll ask you a little bit about that you know, later, but, but as far as, you know, music in, in your life developed, where did this start for you? Did you come from a, a, a musical family or how did it, uh, how did it begin? I guess, uh, just falling in love with music when I was a little kid, there were certain records that my parents would play that I still remember, you know, loving when I was really young, things like the Beatles, Queen, uh, Talking Heads, The Clash, you know, early on just really enjoy it. Well, like, like anybody, I guess, you right. know, just likes dancing around to great music. And um, then a little bit later on in high school, started getting into some more niche kind of stuff and, you know, really just delving into getting into record collecting and everything. And Well, it's a, it's a long-term, lifelong sickness. I hope you realize that. <laughs> It yeah, yeah, no, doesn't I'm go away. <laughs> Once I, I was uh, I was listening to another interview that you had done, and one of the things that you had said is that you started your first band at the age of of uh, like eighth grade, and uh, yeah. you know you've been living in in Los Angeles, you know, for a good you know period of time a, a, as a kid. At what point do you start putting all those pieces together? You know, not only as a as a fan, but as a musician and someone who says in their head, okay, you know what, I might actually be pretty good at this and and this is what i want to do was there a moment that kind of generated for you well i i think it was probably it you know it took some time really because I, I i started recording right really writing my own songs seriously in you know i think like sophomore year of high school maybe <laughs> junior year and so but you know that i mean it, it didn't all start off amazingly you know it took time I, my sound has changed a lot and there there's a lot of stuff that i hope nobody ever hears maybe <laughs> they will i don't know but uh you know it just kind of s slowly morphed and changed over the years and it started to get to a place where i was like oh maybe i should put something out and i recorded a record at, at home and i was like maybe i'll put this out online and kind of just held off and just i think there was just a feeling that i had that I needed to wait a little bit and just keep working at it. And then, you know, when uh, I got the opportunity to get in the studio and do Stay Teenage, I was, it just felt like the right moment and the right time. And I had the songs. So, yeah, just it worked out well. You know, home recording has been going on for forever. And there are some guys that, you know, that's, you know, really how they they do their whole career is is, is home recording. And that's kind of how you started you know, in your in your garage. And then recording tracks on 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 GarageBand. Do you still do it that way? At least you know in creating demos, or or is it now focused on something a little bit bigger than the garage? Yeah, so I'm still demoing out in the garage, getting ready to record another record right now. Actually, that we're doing in July, um, and I you know I really enjoy home recording. It's it's a really different and fun process. That there is some kind of like magic to me I think in getting in a studio for a certain amount of time and just having that time to do something and I think there's something that kind of inspires me about that and uh, definitely on the last record kind of helped create it. Do your neighbors have the same appreciation for home recording in the definitely. garage or not? Well I'm, I'm not too loud anymore uh, really <laughs> but uh, a few years back uh, well I guess not that long maybe Two years ago or so, when when uh, we started, pl we played our first show of, of my music live. We were rehearsing, and uh, on the day of our show, and got threatened to be sued by one of our neighbors because it was too loud. So after <laughs> after that, uh, we stopped rehearsing in the garage. But 
you know, when I can, I can kind of keep it quiet and record the guitars, you know, bi and stuff. So yeah, yeah. but but that's only going to go so far. At some point, you got to make a racket. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing that in, in July. You know, in, in listening to your to your music, and it's it's really very, very impressive, but, you know, the thing that uh, that you hear a lot about are the influences that kind of inform you. And I've, I've read, you know, articles about you that, that mention, you know, things like uh, The Strokes and, and some other bands. But, you know, when I hear it, and, and you know, correct me if I'm, if I'm way off, I hear things more like, you know, old T-Rex and, you know, Mark Bowen. I hear old Sparks. I hear some Beatlesque type of things going on in, in your music really cool stuff in the way you've you've put these songs together what else am i am i am i missing what really is inspiring you like right now in the music that you're putting together yeah i mean all, all those bands that you said are definitely big influences on me i'm i'm like a huge rock and roll fan and just music fan in general so i i guess when i'm writing i'm never really you know thinking about one style or song or band or genre or whatever, you know, but it's just what I love, I guess, that all kind of is just mixed up in my head and then comes out how it comes out, I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty natural synergy of uh, all the influences that I have. But, yeah, I mean, the Beatles are my favourite band of all time and love glam rock and power pop and all that kind of stuff. I think for the, uh, the moment that the song that I really, really love is uh, the best day I ever had. And I, I think the thing I love about it is, is I love a song that sings about how a great day goes to shit. I, I, I don't know. To me, that's a, it's a, it's a good twist and, and unexpected. Like you're expecting more to come and the day winds up being really bad. And yeah, I thought that was just a great, great twist on, on a, on a, on a real classic theme. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You, you talk about uh, about the Beatles and we're talking about, uh, you know, age a little bit. And like I said, I've, I've read a lot of people focusing on how young you are. And what strikes me about that is, in, in a way, it's a little dismissive because, you know, Paul McCartney was 17 years old when he joined the Beatles and 19 years old when Love Me Do came out. So I'm not saying you're the Beatles, but, you know, but the age thing seems to be slightly misguided a little bit. Like it, there's there seems to be an you seem to have accepted the fact that, you know, youth is really kind of on your side and it's kind of good to, to be proud of your youth. And I, I would assume that's part of the title of the, of the EP stay teenage. What, what do you feel about that when people kind of start hyper-focusing on the fact that you're, you're, you're barely in your twenties? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm old now compared to Paul McCartney, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, but in the sixties, but anyway, you know, uh, no, I mean, I guess Stay Teenage was kind of like, actually, in a way, me looking back a little bit on being a little bit younger and remembering being in high school uh, and, you know, experiences I had as a young teenager, you know. So it, in a way, it is almost a bit reflective, but I hope it does still exude, the, you know, the youthfulness that I still do possess and have. Um, yeah, I guess... You know, I feel like it doesn't really matter what age you are, you know, as long as you're excited about things and music, you know, you can stay young forever. So that's uh, that's kind of what, partly what the record's about. And I think it's something that rock and roll does. It makes us feel, or at least remind us of... I think you can, you know, assess the kind of enthusiasm and uh, an excitement of, of any artist, band or individual artist, by, you know, how they play live. I was just watching some uh, some videos of you and the band on YouTube. And and not just, you know, the videos for, you know, the best day I had, you know, ever had, or, you know, some of the other songs. But there's a there was one live performance in New York. This is a, a video that someone had posted probably like three months ago. And it sounded amazing. And it sounded like, you know, the band, you, you were opening up for somebody in the band, that the crowd was, you know, anticipating the opening band. But by the end of your set, I think the crowd was kind of more in your back pocket at that point. Like, I think you exceeded their expectations. You know, whenever you see, like, an opening band, you're not really sure what you're going to get. And I think when they saw how on target you guys were and how enthusiastic it all sounded, it was a pretty infectious performance I, do you find that that's how audiences are reacting to you even as an opening act 
Thank you. That's very kind. Um, I mean, yeah, we we uh, we had our first ever US tour recently, opening for a, a, a band called Max Satin. Uh, really nice guys. Uh, but you know, I wasn't really sure how it was going to go because obviously it is mostly their fan base coming out. But it was a really amazing, uh, pleasant surprise that a lot of those kids, you know, that maybe have never heard us before, really did seem to connect to the music and and really enjoyed it. And uh, so yeah, it was, it was a fantastic experience. And I'm excited to be getting back to playing in LA this summer. So uh, you know, hopefully uh, people keep coming out and. Having fun. LA is kind of going through, from what I understand, you know, I'm, I'm in Massachusetts, so I'm, you know, I'm not there to see it you know, firsthand, but there seems to be, yeah. the music scene seems to be going through another renaissance uh, again. And, you know, bands are starting to get noticed that things are starting to happen in Los Angeles musically. Tell me about what's going on there and what, from your perspective, what's, uh, you know, what's emerging. Yeah, there, there is some, there's some really cool stuff going on here. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite bands around town, um, my all my good friends are in a uh, band called the Uni Boys, who I, I don't know if you've heard of them, they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. They've got a record coming out pretty soon, I think, that's incredible. Uh, there's an act called Dagger Polyester, who's really amazing, and uh, I'm playing with them towards the end of uh, this month of May. They put on an incredible show. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff going on, yeah. When you released the EP, and actually, you know, uh, last year you released the single Onwards and Upwards, and I, you know, I really like that song. But what's really noticeable about this EP is there's a maturation that is that has happened in your sound, and I assume part of that is you're working in a, in a in a bigger studio. There's probably a little bit more money involved in producing this. Plus, you've got Chris Robinson on track but there does seem to be a leap in in the songwriting and where it's going not that onwards and upwards is a bad song in fact it's a great song but moving towards the ep stay teenage you're starting to see that your feet are starting to get a little bit more solid and confident is that is that how you're feeling about the music right now i mean definitely yeah we actually recorded that record a little over a year ago now. <laughs> so uh, it's taken a long time for it to, as, as you know, with getting things pressed on vinyl and mixed and mastered and everything, it does take a long time. But the next record that I've been writing for over the, since we recorded that one, you'll definitely hear that uh, my songwriting has even matured or changed, come along further and stay teenage. So I'm excited to, to even try and uh, up myself on the next record. Now you're you're saying that that uh, is either out in July or will be recorded Sorry. in July. Yeah, we're recording that in July. You're recording it in July, and and yeah. who's producing it this time around? Uh, it's going to be me and Chris Robinson again. Yeah. Good choice, Billy. <laughs> Good choice. It's kind of fun to watch someone you know you know young and uh, and uh, exciting kind of come out. I hear a lot of people. You know, my age, maybe a little bit younger, you know, wondering, you know, you know, where's all the good music coming from? Where did it go? How come it seemed to have disappeared? And my answer has always been, it really depends on how hard you want to look for it, because there's a lot of really great stuff that's that's out right now. And I put your music in that in that category. I mean, it's it is out there. And what people tend to forget, because this is such a an impatient society that back in the old days, if you wanted to find what was new, you had to go to a record store and ask the guy behind the counter, Hey, what's new? And he would tell you it's the same kind of thing. It, it just requires a little bit of effort and, and tenacity. And I would think that if people are really paying attention, they're going to stumble across something really remarkable going on with you. And it's uh, you with this EP. And I assume with what's coming out uh, later in the year, I think when people say you're an up and coming act and there's some trajectory, it's absolutely true. And it, it seems to be growing at a, at a pretty rapid pace for you. I mean, it's what an incredible time for you to be in on this right now. Yeah, no, that's exciting. I mean, it's really what I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So we're off to a good start, but got, uh, got a lot to do. Sure there is. Billy, it's great to talk to you. Best of luck with the EP. It's called uh, Stay Teenage, and it's out now. And 
new record out maybe by the end of the year? I think so, yes. Very yeah, good. Coming soon. Billy, great to talk to you. Best of luck. I hope things go well for you. Thanks very much. Great talking to you. Take care now. The name of Billy Tibble's new EP is called Stay Teenage. It's just fantastic. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like it, share it, review it, tell all your friends about it. You can follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and email me at bax at rock102.com. I'd love to know what you think. Thanks again to ZM Home Buyers at ZNMHomes.com. And thanks again for listening to Baxi's musical podcast.